Hello, welcome back to my blog Edis English Literature. Today we are going to discuss about William Shakespeare's dramatic skills and how it flourished by the influence of university wits. William Shakespeare is no doubt a genius, but his creative dramas are no isolated islands. They are a continuity of a larger piece of land. We mean to say that his is the production which is an amalgamation of all the helps, all the accumulated spirits that helped him to be a man called genius William Shakespeare. As we all know, university wits are seven great university scholars who were either educated in Cambridge or in Oxford except for Kidd of course, uh, Kidd uh, was no university guy, uh, Lily, Green, Ness had been in, in, uh, in Cambridge University whereas Bale, Marlowe and Lodge has been in Oxford and kids um, were self-taught. Now all these university kids started writing drama and they paved the way in which William Shakespeare came and ruled the Elizabethan audience. This kind of sentence is a generalization of the very uh, topic, but it is quite right that William Shakespeare uh, is much indebted by the writings of these great writers who, who are called university wits. The so called university wits, uh, whom we all know, uh, made the stage ready that we are talking about and a uh, receptive audience uh, the Elizabethan simple people or the less educated mass of the Elizabethan period was ready uh, for almost they they were ad addicted to the very sound and fury the thrill of the drama and the sweetness of that uh, dramatic art which they cherished at the Elizabethan time was the best entertainment provided at that moment. So and the audience were ready and the audience were prepared by these university wits. Among the university wits, uh, Lily deserves a unique place uh, particularly in English comedy. As a entertainer, simply Lily entertained the Elizabethan mass in such a way that by the very delicacy of the tone, the style, the signature style and a remarkably refined language, he has been a mixture of great caliber as well as simple uh, entertaining. Such things applied to the Elizabethan audience and were tasted refined as the time and it paved the way for the brilliance of the Shakespeare to catch that opportunity and become successful. Most of the Shakespearean concerts which are a complex pattern of uh, a complex pattern of singular imagery or the euphemism that is prominently called uh, in early Shakespearean writing those um, literally being copied from Lily the style is particularly uh, Lily's the two gentlemen of Verona loves lever lost this two particular drama and down to as you like it even uh, such thing are very commonplace in Shakespeare. In Shakespearean romantic comedy the ingredients that we mostly find uh, is being copied from or being ideally stolen from Lily. The great man steals an atmosphere of dream, romance, remoteness is very Lillian. The love that centers around the entire plot is also Lillian view. But it's not so that a entirety of this experience is gone in Shakespearean comedy. But we mean to say that Lily's structural design as well as uh, thematic presentation 
were being a parallel to Shakespeare or Shakespeare had the sources of lily and Shakespeare used those lilian source uh, to its perfection. Uh, in another matter of uh, love story that combination and the comic underplot uh, and the romantic way of disguising uh, sex and uh, there is a witty comic mingling, lyrical musical presentation, everything is uh, Lillian and uh, Shakespeare probably uh, learned uh, the symmetrical balancing of structure from Lily uh, because uh, from Lily we can find out a complete dramatic structural presentation and, and it is um, um, Shakespeare's predecessor Lily that saved Shakespeare's great comedies no doubt. From another great writer Robert Greene, Shakespeare has ideally copied the concept of womanhood because uh, Robert Greene has been a champion or rather as Ness has himself described him as a humor of womanhood. So from, uh, from the very dramatic presentation of the English women, that lively, that lively and that witty in same as Lillian manner, uh, Green's comedies that explores the love and the satire, the verbal duel, everything is like that of Green's brilliance and that brilliance were doubled when Shakespeare reused these canons in his writing. So, um, if we are reading Shakespearean comedy and um, beforehand if we had, we had uh, read Green's comedy, we will say that uh, the second version of maturity is in Shakespeare. So uh, the premature Shakespeare might be a presentation of uh, Robert Green. In Shakespeare, Harmon or in Pardita you can have a parallel of Green's Dorotha or Margaret. So the touch of uh, Green is in Shakespearean uh, characterization particularly of the women, if not entirely uh, the atmosphere. Uh, when we are talking about Shakespearean maturity as a tragedian, uh, Thomas Kidd's writing has been a great source that not only educated William Shakespeare but given him the ample opportunity to become a successful tragedian. Kidd's writing, particularly the Panis tragedy, um, that uh, both in theme and in form uh, is the best English presentation of Senecan tragedy of that bloodshed, of that revenge, of that vengeance on stage, even the concept of pride that is more pivotal in uh, Marlowe's writing indeed. But even before that, the concept of pride was hidden in kids' writing. Kids' Spanish tragedy or uh, its uh, Senecan representations of horror, bloodshed um, has been a ready source for maturity of Shakespearean um, tragedies, particularly Hamlet. Another notable thing in kids is its craftsmanship with that as character and blank parts. To say in kids, uh, the poetic soul that the Marlowe had or uh, the artistic exuberance that Shakespeare exhibited uh, had not been in kids. So uh, what we find in the maturity, particularly in revenge tragedy, the maturity is itself uh, Shakespeare's own. Another great university which we often read is Pell. That fell is uh, mellifluous parts, 
that is nothing a real sense uh, of artistic uh, presentation of plot or compactness of some tales but it has some great qualities and uh, that is subtle humor and grace the old wives tale and that blowing into the world of comedy some fresh air of lightness and gentle satire is of pelis the most chanting figure among shakespeare's predecessors was certainly christopher mal if we say that there had not been any christopher mal there had not been the possibility of making up a man like william shakespeare the great tambulan the mongol hero a sudden and splendid conquest of the elizabethan tragic stage with the power of his poetic genius and mighty blank verse line that tragic hero who anthropocentric with man in the center of the universe trying to snatch a superhuman glory that theme that concept becomes such pivotal one a presentable way of giving the world a new beauty of tragic writing of the shakespeare early writing uh, there is marlovian influences no doubt rhetorical flourishes are more or less uh, through the line of marlovian uh, style of presentation and uh, we uh, can not deny that sydney and pencer had some influences uh, on this category but marlow had the greatest source for there mm-hmm. had not been any edward too there might not have been any richard to uh, marlow's jews uh, are the model in fact for shakespeare's jew characteristics of uh, its blank verse its artistic imagery even uh, the presentation of the characters were also being loaded from the emanations from christopher marlow Shakespeare has learned many a thing from Marlowe. He has learned from Lily, from Green, from Kidd, even the Lazar Pilly. His admiration and his uh, culminating effort to admire those texts and stealing the desirable part and making them its own is very Shakespearean. in the long process of labor culture tradition conveying the best of the renaissance elizabethan england all of this university would tried a mirror in front of them to the entirety of the history but william shakespeare used their used their mirror to look at himself and search for the elizabethan theme and represent the world as he becomes a personal attachment with that concept of entirety so what we mean to say that he took the world as it is and gathered together all the elements of his experience in life and literature from the service and the from the great dramatic art he steals them he used them he imbibed them and made them his own that is shakespeare's geniusness shakespeare's artistry the most comprehensive soul could not afford to miss anything that came his way and his illustrious predecessor suddenly provided in the indefinite riches of predecessors and experiences which he could utilize to his heart's content but it was shakespeare who could utilize it if there came another one he might have felt that way so uh, Shakespeare's creative genius is that he learned this university wits and as well as his predecessors very much and uh, and uh, took all the possible ways of defining himself defining his artistry in a new dramatic format if we say there are plenty of similarities between them uh, it is also 
uh, true that there, there are plenty of dissimilarities between all of these uh, great writers uh, it is quite clear to say that if we go through the same lane we, if we go through the same traffic uh, we might have a tita tail everywhere that represents yours as mine mine as yours so what we mean to say that if we are going through the same lane of history it is quite true that each of the person get influenced by the other one and the vice versa so it's continued uh, in the age of william shakespeare as it been continued in the age of homer or in in dante in any of the world literature and in shakespeare if we say that uh, shakespeare's geniusness is its a creative majesty uh, the uh, inexorable laws that uh, uh, william shakespeare follows in his writing it is entirely his own that is his uh, moral rightness or um, the judgment of uh, his uh, character's thoughts and basically and these thoughts are shakespeare's own and this is the moral judgment that he could not had from anybody else and that is the geniusness of william shakespeare so that's it uh, the lecture can be continued further but uh, as we are limited by time so if there is any queries uh, regarding the, this university weeds and they are uh, representative collaboration uh, between those writers as well as how shakespeare indebted from these writers uh, from his predecessors particularly university which you can pop up any question regarding this i will try my best to answer so thank you bye bye stay tuned and subscribe